Yo, what's good, YouTube? Sam Crow here, aka Scoop, back with the International Draft Masters Season 3, Week Number 8, and we're taking on our good buddy, Neand or Neandrew, Neandrew, Andy, coach of the Bexleheth Bisharp. So, very confident battler, um, one of my favorite uh, small gun players, and he's uh, he's been playing the draft league format quite a bit, like at least four, roughly. Um, and he's drafted a fucking terri uh, terri terrifying squad. He's got Z, uh, Tapu Koko, Cartana, Mega Absol, Conqueror, Z Moltres, Metagross, Roserade, Araquanid, Gladius, Palisan, Klefki, and the Slacking. So very scary squad. He is sitting at three and four right now with a minus 11 differential though. Um, we're, we're also sitting at three and four. So one of us is gonna break even here which is very, 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 very important for a playoff run. Our team is, as always, we've got uh, Z, Lander, Therian, Zera Aura, Coma O, Necrozma, Scizor, Primarina, Z, Incineroar, Decidueye, Z, Glaceon, Mega Diancy, Tauros, and the Garbodor. And uh, this week we've decided to bring Lander, Therian, Zera Aura, Primarina, Incineroar, and Decidu or, excuse me, Decidueye, and Mega Diancy. With the idea of being behind uh, behind Zero Aura and Mega Diancy, basically like every week they're our offense, and I think this is the first week we're able to bring <laughs> the Alolan starter trio, which is awesome: Primarina, Incineroar, and Decidueye. Top of the screen uh, in the center, so very awesome to bring you know a Fire Water Grass core of you know a single generations starter types, uh, starters, it's phenomenal, I love it, the reason I did it, <laughs> is the reason I drafted him, anyways, he's got some pretty scary, scary things versus our team, however, something like uh, Topo Coco, we do have Lander's Therian, which is an immunity, we have Zara Aura, which is an immunity to electric types, uh, Lander's also being immune to electric, not very, Primarina, uh, gets bought by electric, <laughs> Excuse me, I'm, I'm going to bypass the ones that are neutral or super effective. And then we've got Decidueye, which resists. Um, Coma over this Thunderbolt. So not not terribly weak to Coco. And Zeraor does outspeed Coco. And like I mentioned, can get the Bolt Absorb. Can use the Electric Terrain against um, Andy. Uh, Cartana is huge threat. I don't have like uh, I guess outside of like Scizor or or Decidueye uh, coupled with Lander's Therian and Incineroar's uh, Intimidate Shuffle I, I guess I can play around Cartana pretty well. I do have Mons faster than it. I do have uh, type advantages so on and so forth and Intimidate Shuffle. I did bring two Intimidate users in this matchup so it shouldn't be shouldn't be too big of an issue same thing for abra however abra can be a special attacking set as well could pack something like fire blast or flamethrower for scissor could pack ice beam for landers could be uh knock off sucker punch swords dance and a uh, move of your choice could be iron tail for mega diancy uh, we both do get magic balance he is faster than mega diancy though conk's always a huge threat uh mock punch guts Flame more could be problematic. It also gets Iron Fist and all the elemental punches and Drain Punch and Mock Punch, so that's really nice. Z Moltres could be problematic. Um, he could run something like screen, like Spike Stack and Screens passed into like Bulk Up Conk or Swords Dance Mega Absor or maybe like an Agility Metagross. He could have some kind of Screens with Hazard Stack and then pass into, or not, excuse me, not pass, but like U Turn out into something. Like uh, Metagross, Kong, Mega Absol, the Latius, Klefki even, to uh, start setting up or something like that. He has, I think, what, one, two, just two potential Stealth Rockers. He does have two potential Spikers and Roserade, which gets Toxic Spikes as well. And I think, is that a Raquinid? I think that's a Raquinid. And it gets um, Sticky Webs, I believe. So yeah, very, very, very problematic versus our team. So we're going to go ahead and hop into our uh, individual uh, sets here. Our first Pokemon is Lander's Therian. Um, <laughs> designated Stealth Rocker with Defog as well. So it's going to be our Hazard Control on 
in terms of setting them up and removing them. We've got Earthquake, which hits basically his entire team outside of the, I think, the Moltres, the Lottie, and what else was it? And maybe like a uh, Magnetized Cliff Key. But uh, the Moltres and the Lottie don't appreciate a Super Sonic Sky Strike. Despite my lack of attack investment and whatnot, we are uh, we have enough speed to outpace Moltres, and we have uh, max HP, which makes us very, very, very bulky. We can take Hidden Power Ice, um, Dazzling Gleam from Coco. We can take Leaf Blade or Smart Strike from Cart. Mega Absol. We can take Sucker Punch, um, Knock Off. Even uh, even if he was to get like a Justified Boost into a Swords Dance. And then got intimidated. Knockoff still doesn't knock us out. Conk could be problematic. Z Fly will eliminate that threat. <laughs> Z Fly also knocks out the Moltres unless it's like max HP, max defense, or something like that. Earthquake gonna bop Metagross. Um, Roserade. It's it, either or. I guess it depends on what range it's at and how like how much I need it dead immediately, so on and so forth. Bops a Raquinid. Um, gets rid of Sticky Webs potentially. Stealth Rock, so on and so forth. Um, Able to just hit a very, very powerful Z Fly versus anything. Intimidate Shelf was really nice for Cartana, Mega Absol, Conk, Metagross, Araquanid itself, Palisand, and the Slacking. Um, slacking is a huge threat. I do remember at the beginning of the season when Andy drafted it, he said he didn't want to bring Banded and take some lines with it. So that's something to look out for. And we do have Scizor, which could kind of check Slacking. We do have Mega Diancy, which is a resist, and Decidueye, which is a immunity to normal type. So it shouldn't be too big of an issue, especially with double intimidate shuffle. So it's going to be that, and we can move on to Zera Aura. Alright, so we've got a bulk up Life Orb variant for Zera Aura, Bolt Absorb, obviously, and we've got three attacks Plasma Fist, Fire Punch, and Knock Off. Basically, the best coverage versus my opponent, um, outside of a way to hit Coco super effectively or anything like that. But in, uh, like, after, okay, <laughs> Life Orb, Plasma Fist, in the Electric Terrain is going to be able to, like, three hit Coco, three hit KO. Coco, regardless, if I got a bulk up up, I could potentially two hit KO it. Um, it might be a four hit KO without a bulk up, and then a three hit KO with bulk up, or potentially a two hit KO, depending on stealth rocks and you know what range is that, so on and so forth. However, the idea is to uh, use his terrain versus him, um, get a bulk up with a life orb, and then use plasma fist in the electric terrain. It uh, does quite a bit of damage. <laughs> he has the palisand, which is immune. The, the Lottie, which is uh, resistant to electric, and then I think that's just about it. Uh, Cartana doesn't really count as a resist, but we do have the Fire Punch uh, nonetheless, and we have Knockoff for the Palisand and the Lottie, so it should, uh, should be pretty solid coverage there. Speed is really nice. We, we can uh, outpace all the way up to Coco with our speed investment and everything below. Uh, this thing is really, really nice in this matchup. Hopefully, it can put in some work and we can move on to Prim Arena now. Up is uh, Prim Arena, like I mentioned. Leftovers, Torrent, Scald, Moonblast, Ice Beam, Encore, Max Defense, Max HP. This is my designated Absol check. Um, we can come in, we can take any one hit into any other hit and click Moonblast and guarantee knock him out. He has, I think, uh, one. One resist to Moonblast and Scald in his Roserade, which does not appreciate Ice Beam. And then we've got Encore so that we can uh, Encore just about anything into just about anything. Really, if he sets up Stealth Rocks with Palisand, we can Encore it into that. If uh, Eklefki, for example, if it sets up Spikes or it goes for Thunder Wave or whatever it may be, Magnet Rise, whatever it may be, I can Encore it into that and make it you know pretty much useless. Um, Scald, Chance to Burn, things like Cartana, Mega Absol, Conk, as long as it's not Flame War, uh, or Guts, excuse me. Um, Scald's nice versus the Metagross, Moonblast is very nice versus the Mega Absol, um, the Araquanid, the Laddie, so on and so forth. It's a really solid mod in the, in the matchup, in my opinion. It also hits Moltres, can take a hit from Moltres, Hurricane, or Z Hurricane, and can bop it with the uh, Scald, especially if I'm in Torrent. Uh, Scald will just plow through Moltres and um, even things like Mega Absol and Palisand, uh, you know, if I'm in Torrent range. But yeah, that's going to be it, and we can move on to Incineroar. 
With Incineroar, we're, we're rocking another Fake Out U-Turn Knockoff variant with Fire Punch, Intimidate, obviously, Assault Vest. We are max HP, max Spadef with a Spadef boosting nature, minus special attack nature, um, so that we do get a little bit out of our uh, attacks with Fake Out U-Turn Knockoff Fire Punch, respectively. Um, Assault Vest with max HP, max Spadef, and a Spadef boosting nature. Uh, just puts this thing at incredible heights in terms of special defense. Can take hits from Roserade, uh, the Laddie, Klefki, uh, Tapu Koko, in terrain, and not really have too much of a problem. This thing can be a designated lead with Fake Out. Um, it's really nice with Knockoff versus Palisand and the Lottie. The only reason I don't think I could lead with this is because of their Raquinid, but he, he may opt to not bring that thing. And this thing's a pretty solid switch in to Moltres. Takes literally nothing, like Super Sonic Shy Shark does around 40 to 45 or something like that. Um, if it's like a hurricane bearing. Anyways, uh, this thing, like, it gets the Intimidate Shuffle off versus Cartana, Mega, Lap, Mega Absol, and it's really good versus those mons as long as they don't go for the fire type attack on my switch in. I can always uh, switch into my Incineroar versus Cartana or Mega Abs will get the Intimidate off and then predict a fighting type move to come out, double out into my Landorus there and get another Intimidate off before, you know, switching for the final time at that point. Um, I do think if it's Mega Absol, if I get a two Intimidates off and then go into Prim Arena, he's, his moves are bouncing off, we're going to chew those. And then same thing for Cartana, uh, if we get a double Intimidate off, we can go out into Decidueye or potentially even stay in with Landers or Incineroar or double back to the other one and get one more Intimidate off before uh, starting to attack and so on and so forth. But yeah, that's going to be it for Incineroar and we can move on to Decidueye and finish off this Fire, Water, Grass core. Alright, so Decidueye is going to be a Cold Berry variant so that we can take a knockoff from something like Cartana, uh, specifically Cartana, but there's other things as well such as the Mega Absol, the Kakelder, uh, potentially Metagross with Pursuit, so on and so forth. I think Slacking also gets uh, Pursuit, so that's something to look out for. So we're a substitute Baton Pass variant with Swords Dance and Rouge. We have no attack. We are we have a little bit of speed investment to creep. Uh, I forgot what it was. We're setting at 217 speed. Maybe, maybe that's definitely enough for like... Uh, actually, I have no idea what that's for off the top of my head right now. Um, anyways, the idea is to click substitute and baton pass it into something like Zara Aura or Mega Niancy. Uh, if we're lucky, we could potentially baton pass a Swords Dance and a substitute into one of the other, or one of either. And then Roost is there for longevity. We can come in, we can take Cartana's hits, we can take uh, Coco's hits, we can take a Z Brave Bird, um, take hits from Rosa Raid. Can't take a hit from Moltres, but <laughs> we're not really going to try to do that anyway. And then this thing can, um, like, opponents don't know if I'm going to click U-Turn, Spirit Shackle, Leaf Blade, Roost, Defog, U-Turn, so on and so forth. Uh, lots of lots of different viabilities uh, that Decidueye brings to the table. And I think this set could not necessarily do a lot of work for itself, but it could definitely put something else in a position to... Uh, win. E even like Baton passing a Swords Dance into something like Landorus Therian or Incineroar is really 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 scary for my opponent. But yeah we can move on to our last Pokemon which is going to be our Mega Diancy. Alright so Mega Diancy is going to be a Protect, Moonblast, Diamond Storm, and Earth Power set. Moonblast goes ham. Uh, his re resist is Cartana, Moltres, Metagross, and Roserade. And the Clefty. Outside of that, Moonblast hits everything for at least neutral damage and maybe super effective damage such as Mega Absol, Confidor, um, and the Lottie. And then we've got Diamond Storm, which is going to bop something like the Moltres, the Araquanid. And then Earth Power is there for the Metagross, specifically. Protect is kind of like a uh, like a scout move bullet punch on Metagross spikes or um, target spikes on Roserade um, maybe check for a potential like it's a, example Cartana if Cartana comes in to revenge kill we go for the smart strike I can hard switch out um, accordingly 
and I can get rid of terrain turns. I could potentially bypass like uh, uh, with protect versus like slacking. If it goes for an attack and I protect, and then on the next turn its ability kicks in and it can't move or something like that, it could be problematic. If deciduous able to pass a uh, sword stance and a sub into Mega Diancy, Diamond Storm's just wrecking the house. And this thing can put in a lot of work. My Mega Dance behind the sub is very, very scary. But that's going to be it. And we can hop into the replay and we'll be right back. All right, so here we are with the replay. My opponent chooses to bring Coco, the slacking as expected. I knew he was going to bring it versus me. Cartana, Mega Absol, Moltres, and the Palosan. Hopefully, Palosan isn't our downfall because uh, we have, we're actually the ones who encouraged him to draft said Pokemon. So that'd be a little bit unfortunate if it came back to. Uh, beat us when it you know really really mattered <laughs> because both of us are fighting to go you know five, over 500 and well to hit 500 in this match one of us is going to get our fourth win one of us is going to pick up a fifth loss that being said we want the fourth win we don't want no fifth loss um some threats he didn't bring he didn't bring the conk uh conkelder that, that was pretty uh surprising uh no metagross so no real switching into mega diancy and then no Roserade. Uh, seeing no Roserade and no Klefki was really, really, really uh, satisfying. And no Araquanid. So no Spikes, no Toxic Spikes, no Sticky Webs. None of that garbage that I didn't want to face. Which kind of makes sense. We do have a Magic Bouncer, a um, couple different Defoggers, so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, uh, we have the squad that we mentioned in the Team Builder. And... Uh, Potential leads for him could be something like Coco and just U turn or Volt Turn or U turn out. He could lead with the Palisan and set up Stealth Rocks. He could lead with Mega, excuse me, not Mega. Well, yeah, he could lead with the Mega Absol and click Knock Off. He could click, um, he could lead with the Moltres and click something like, uh, like U turn or Hurricane or something straight off the bat. I'm going to expect him to lead off with his palace end though, and we're going to lead off with our incinerator. We're going to get the intimidate off and threaten this thing with the knockoff. So, not a terrible lead for us at all. And yeah, just click a knockoff here is fine. He can go into his Absol if he wants. It will get a uh, will get a justified boost, but nothing too concerning. Uh, what we can do here is predict him to go for the either knock off or the superpower and we can go out into our lander staring and get an intimidate off so he does go for the superpower reveals that he has a superpower and it does quite a bit of damage um what we can do though <laughs> we can attack this bad boy we can click earthquake or we can click supersonic strike sky strike or we can predict him to switch out predicting us to be choice scarf and we can set up our stealth rocks which would be very very ballsy but could come in handy versus moltres or we can just double out predicting the ice beam and go out into our prim arena which is what we're going to do as he goes for the knockoff actually and gets rid of our leftovers that's not too problematic as long as we don't get uh, whittled down too much and we just click scald here no reason not to had he went into cartana um he could have potentially been burnt and then nothing else wanted to take a scald it, like nothing else really wants to take a scald so as i go into my landers he makes a really nice uh, really nice double into his uh, Moltres there as uh, we actually do go out into Orlando's there so we kind of do force him either back out scout for Stone Edge or something we're gonna go for the Z, uh, Supersonic Sky Strike the Z fly immediately see what we can do here um, it would have knocked out the Moltres as long as it wasn't like really really bulky and does a hell of a lot to the Palisand to where we can knock it out with Earthquake and prevent Stealth Rocks in this matchup. So that's really nice. He brings in the slacking here. And uh, I don't want to switch into anything immediately and I don't necessarily need Landers anymore. So what I'm actually going to do is see what he wants to go for here. He could attack me and potentially knock me out, which he does with the double edge. Reveals to be very, very offensive. And what we're going to do is we're going to go hard out into our Zara Warrior here. As we can click Plasma Fist and double edge then becomes a electric type move. And will give us Volt Absorb. And the Truant ability is here. So what we're going to do is immediately click the bulk up. He doesn't have too much counterplay here. And he goes for the knockoff 
reveals to be Scarf. Gets rid of her life orb, which is kind of nice for us because we don't take recoil. And we're able to knock that thing out with the uh, Fire Punch here. And now he brings in his Absol. I could go for Bulk Up again, predicting the Sucker Punch. But on the off chance that he attacks and then goes for Sucker Punch on the following turn, I don't want to be knocked out. So I'm just going to click the Plasma Fist here. It should be able to pick up the Knockout. He has no uh, immunities anymore, so Plasma Fist is free to click. He decides to go into his Coco, setting up his terrain the following turn. Uh, Plasma Fist hits it harder than Knockoff or Fire Punch does, so I'm going to go for that. It's not actually going to be able to knock him out on this turn because of the Reflect, which is actually pretty cool. Um, I, I did expect him to be some kind of Screens variant, and then like you turn out into some kind of setup Pokemon. I uh, didn't really expect the Slacking here, and this is a roll. It was like 37% to like 45%. I wasn't going to risk the roll there, and... Uh, when I can just hard switch out into my incinerator or get an intimidate off and then like you turn out or click fake out or something and waste a turn or something like that. However, I'm just gonna click knock off here. No reason not to. As he goes out into his Moltres, which reveals, you know, to be Z. He goes for the flame charge though, as we're just gonna U turn out. He keeps a light screen up for one turn, but now he's faster than everything on my squad. So what I'm gonna do is go into Primarina and then double into Incineroar predicting the Z move. As it will bounce off, and I'll still be at a uh, really high amount of health in terms of uh, taking on this Moltres. As you can see, Hurricane bounces off as well. We can U-turn out, and what we're going to do is go out into the Prim Arena here. Um, that would have that wouldn't have knocked us out. We are max HP, not max Spadef, but we are uh, naturally bulky on the Spadef side. So we're going to hard switch out into our Mega Diancie here, take the Double Edge, and now Mega Evolve up and knock this bad boy out with the Moonblast and we're going to pick up a nice 5-0 victory against a really really solid battler in Andy and a really really scary team so nice to get that out of the way and we do hit the 4-4 four four mark and we're able to go uh, right at that 500 mark and now we have a chance to get back in the playoffs um, basically every match from here on out is a must win uh, situation like it might not be at the end of the season all these games might not be must win but right now as we go they are must win we can't fall behind again we can't fall to a losing record again we've got to get into a playoff position and make her sneak our way into playoffs and potentially win this season three title but uh, yeah it's gonna be it good game to andy let me know what you thought about the prep and the plates on both sides of the field leave a like comment and subscribe all the good stuff and i'll see you guys next time thank you for watching